well as throughout the season. So give Justin a big round of applause here and we'll get him started. Um, you have to be good on first down. Our first down 
You'll see on our schedule, our first out game plan, we spend a, you know, a huge chunk of Monday. We don't practice on Monday. A huge chunk of Monday on our first down. Okay? First down and second and normal. Okay? Second and normal to me is anything underneath seven. It's not second and long. Okay? You can drive yourself crazy if you cut up all of that stuff and you're watching and trying to figure it out. I want to know first down. I want to know normal down and distance. We're on the chains. Okay? It's not second. You know, we didn't lose six yards on first down. It's second and we're on the chains. Okay? We're trying to get four yards on first down. When we go down to third and fourth and inches, okay? we were going to just see, sometimes there's only one clip. Okay? But if it's less than a yard, it's a, a short third and fourth down, and it's really, really short, okay? Um, then we'll try and get a cut up of that. Then we'll look at third and short, one to two, okay? And then we'll go third and medium, three to six, and third and long, seven plus. We used to do a third and 11 plus also. To me, those kind of rolling together. I think when you're going to call the game, you need to know. You've got a couple third and extra long calls on there. We don't actually divide them up separately because, I mean, I'm sure you can. It's no big deal, but we just don't. Um, you know, I, I do think it's important that you don't call a eight-yard out route on 30 12 and throw it and the guy steps out of bounds and you punt, unless you're the head coach. If you're the head coach, you can do that. But if not, I wouldn't. Um, so I think it's important to, as a play caller, to at least highlight what you're going to have to do if it's third and super long. And that's how we break those up. Again, we spend a bunch of time on first and third down. I don't, uh, you know, I want to get a general, a general thought process of what they're going to do on second and long, and I may highlight two or three plays going into the game that I think we need to do. Okay, you know, usually it's a draw screen or a drop back pass. Okay, but <clears throat> we're not going to spend an incredible amount of time on that. Okay, our weekly schedule, I think this is important. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's certainly not uh, unique, I don't think, other than the fact that on we do not practice or on Monday. Our kids are off on Monday. On Sunday, okay, basically for the next game, okay, after practice that evening, we watch a couple game films. That's it, okay? Um, when we go out to practice, we'll hit our no huddle, okay? We'll hit our um, we'll hit our base runs and options in the base looks that we know we're going to get, okay? We'll hit play action pass. That'll be about 15 minutes, okay, on Sunday. And then we'll come in, we'll actually grab it by D, then we'll come in, and we'll watch for a little while, we'll watch the next opponent. Trying to get a feel for who the heck we're playing, what exactly they do, okay? On Monday, when we come in and we start game planning, Okay, I usually get in there uh, a little bit earlier than the rest of the staff, so I can get a little bit better feeling. Like, you know, the guy that has to pull the trigger on game day, I think, you know, is preparing for an exam. And it, I'm not as smart as everybody else. It takes me longer to prepare. Okay, um, but we meet as a staff from seven till noon, and we work on first down. Okay, we are working on basically how to run the ball. Okay, our play action stuff. We talk about a little bit in that time, but basically we're working on how we run the ball. And we talk, we go through um, each personnel group and formation. Okay, we are a multiple offense. We're not always in the spread. We do a lot in the spread. When we get in 12 personnel, uh, we get in 22 personnel. Um, we still get underneath the center some. So all of that film is really pertinent. Okay, it's labor intensive, but all, all that film is pertinent to, to what we want to do. Um, but basically, that whole morning is first down. Okay, it's, it's all first down. When we come back, okay, from 1:30 to 5, it's still first down. Okay, I want to be sure we're starting to put together some of our double calls, some of the things we'll talk about here here in a little bit. But all all day Monday, we're working on first down. We'll start talking about play action pass and that sort of stuff. Okay, we actually have a special teams meeting from 5 to 6. When we come back at 6 o'clock, okay, we go pro solve problems. We do blitz. Okay, and we do our drop back passing game. Okay, now we don't put too much, awful much in that drop back passing game because that's the way we are. Okay, we put some stuff in there, you know, a handful of stuff. Okay? but we also know we'll get more of that when we get to our third down. And okay? when we get to our third down, we know we'll bring more of that game plan in. Again, let me reiterate: we're not in there drawing new plays. 
Okay, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But we're in there just finding the best way to run ours, how to match them up. Um, and then at night, we'll go home, you know, in the evening time, not too awful late. Okay, uh, but we'll at least have an idea of how we're going to run the ball and, and how we're going to protect uh, versus blitz and what our early drop back game is. When we come in on Tuesday morning, we'll look at third down, okay, in red zone until about 1030, then we'll get practice ready, okay. We usually start our third down, um, you know, usually the third and shorts are kind of easy. We'll start with those and get to third and long. Uh, we'll go practice press, and then we'll go practice, and I've got what we do at practice here later on. Um, and then after practice, um, we'll watch practice, and then we'll go look at, um, at back at red zone, okay? Wednesday morning at 7, we'll come in and we'll, we'll go up, go uh, look at goal line, coming off. Coming off doesn't take very long. It doesn't change very much. We'll look at coming off, we'll look at special plays. Then we get practice ready at 10.30 to 12 and we'll break for lunch. Um, we always come back in. I think it's important that I just at least mention this. From 1.30 to 2 and do script review, I think it's important. I think it's important that everybody sit down and go through the script and go through the practice and, and make sure that things are correct. Okay? We owe it to those kids to make sure when we walk out there on the field that our scripts are correct. Because everybody makes mistakes, right? I mess them up all the time. Okay, I just want to get them right before we go out there and screw it up. Okay, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of rep. And while I'm on my soapbox about that, don't snap. In my opinion, when you're preparing okay, and you have your scout team up, we have a lot of scout work. We do a tremendous amount of scout work. And we do not do much good on good during the week. Okay, But when you are set that scout team up, do not snap the ball unless they are lined up correctly. Okay? When you snap the ball, from that moment on, that scout look deteriorates, correct? I mean, that guy doesn't really play the C-gap like the guy's going to play it, okay? And if, no matter how hard you coach them, they're not going to do it. I mean, they just can't. It's hard, okay? But from that moment on, when you say HUD, that at the snap of the ball, that's your control over the look. It needs to look correct, okay? And every millisecond after that, it deteriorates, deteriorates. But at least get it lined up. If it's not lined up correctly, when you say "hut," it's a waste of everybody's time. It drives me crazy. It drives everybody on our staff crazy. We 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 feel like we at least try and go the extra mile to make sure it's correct once they line up. And once those silly guys go to after the ball snap, there ain't no tunnel. Okay. Um, but I think it's important to sit down and go over it. Okay, and we try and go over it quickly so we can have 15 more minutes to sit there and stare at each other and talk about what's going on in the real world. But we, we do try and review the script. Wednesday after practice, we will watch the film and then I'll get up on the board and say, okay, what do we have to have tomorrow? Okay, who needs something? Running back coach, what do you need tomorrow? Either in walkthrough or in practice in order for you guys to play well. Receiver coach, what do you need tomorrow? I gotta have double post versus cover two, or I gotta have, you know, whatever. Okay, O line coach, I gotta have, you know, Oki cross out of the fifty with our six man protection call. Okay, good. I'll make sure I get. And we just list them all. Now that may be a walkthrough, okay, but we just list them all like right there, and I make sure we get them. Okay, either in a walkthrough before practice or during the practice. Okay, but it's those guys' opportunity to say, hey, coach, I need this, I need this, I need this. I gotta have it to make sure my guys are ready to go. Okay? And then we come out of it. Thursday morning, we get in there, we do a practice script. Um, and I'll show you here in our time to schedule. But we try to play a game on Thursday. Uh, that's kind of our goal. Our, we talked a little bit about our two-point plays, which falls into our special plays on Wednesday. But there's not a lot going on game plan-wise on Thursday, obviously. It's a little bit less to um, This is just our Sunday practice. Okay, so start the week. You got 15 minutes a team. Okay, we do five minutes, of, and this team is base looks, base runs or base looks. This screens period is we don't put a D line up there because they just mess it up. We just put the perimeter guys out there, and we're trying to go as fast as possible. Okay, we're not in a particular formation. We're in trips to the field or doubles into the boundary, and we're running our screens. We're trying to get guys run. Okay, obviously they're beat up the day after the game, and we're trying to. Trying to get it going. This BS stands for ball security, um, not the other thing that you would think. Um, but we
But we do five-minute circuit of taking care of the football. And the rest of this is um, individual. Uh, on, uh, yeah, on Tuesday, okay, I'm just going to tell you guys real quickly what we do. Because um, I think there's one thing in here that I think is good. It's worth at least considering, especially if you're a spread team. Okay? We do 10 minutes. We do some individual, okay, which is up to you guys what to do. We do 10 minutes of blitz early in the practice, okay? Then we go to one-on-one. -on -one. We do middle drill still on Tuesday in the season versus defense. It's only three plays with the runs, three plays with the twos. But it's middle drill versus defense. And it's nobody, we're not trying to trick anything. They line up with 800 people in the box, and we line up in 12 personnel around the zone. Okay, but it's just a fastball look, okay? We do scale instances for five minutes. We go over there, they give us the five minutes of looks that we want. Okay? So for five minutes, we ask them to play man free, we ask them to play whatever. We try and get our third down throws and our draft back stuff in there. For five minutes, we give them anything that they want. Then we go to team emphasis, which is the same deal. Okay? Five minutes of them giving us what we want. And I have them blitz the snot out of us. Okay? I have them come, we try and pick it up, we try and do their third down zone blitzes that you're going to see during the week. Whatever it is, I try to make it hard. I try to, it's a test for the lineman and the quarterback, essentially. Okay? Um, and then we flip it over. Then we go back to scouts. You guys see we do a bunch of scouts. We don't do very much good on good. Okay? We have actually four plays of what we call purple ball next to here, which is throw the ball down and call whatever you want. Sometimes, you know, right there at the beginning of practice. But we go do a half line perimeter drill. Um, and versus scouts. And it's been huge for us for a number of reps. We just put the ball down on the left middle and we run, um, you know, six or seven plays to the field and then we run six or seven plays to the boundary and then we flip it, okay? And uh, it's been huge for us because we run a lot of the perimeter runs, I know you guys do, the backwards runs with the, the backs running out there to the edge. We run the option, okay, which, you know, is, is you know, perimeter type stuff. And for the receivers and their blocking schemes, if you're going to X block it for all the bubbles, um, for the linemen too, when you start to pull guys and that sort of stuff, it's been as good a drill as we can get as far as stealing reps, trying to get reps in of our base stuff. And we do that every week. We do it for 10 minutes. And it's been one of the best things we've done. Plus, it breaks up, for us, it breaks up the monotony of team versus scouts. You guys all know what I'm talking about. You get out there for scouts and you're there to gouge your own eyeballs out because it's just a time after time after time. It at least breaks it up a little bit for us. Okay? Then we break up again and we do middle and routes. It's basically scout skeleton for us and middle for scouts for the big boys. Okay? And that's that's a little bit slower deal. You guys gotta understand our practice is at warp speed. Okay? We run two holes at all times going through there. From the day our guys step on campus, our number ones and number twos get the exact same amount of reps. From the very first day they step on campus. Whether it be in spring ball or be in the fall. So every one of these reps, okay, like for this spot, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes of first and 10, we'll get 50 plays. 25 with the ones and 25 with the twos. And we just rapid fire them through there. And you'll find as the season goes on, everybody, when I first got here, I thought, well, our twos will be great by the end of the year. Well, that's not what happens. Okay? The twos get worse because the twos end up in the one huddle as the season goes along. And then your threes and fours end up in the twos. Okay? But when them twos end up in the ones, you're pretty darn thankful that they got all the reps. But um, at, by bowl practice, your twos are terrible. Okay? Because they're all them guys who pray every night you don't have to play with in there. But the guys that were in the twos are now in the one huddle and they're hopefully playing pretty well. Um, and then we'll go to finally, we'll go to team scouts. Well, like I said, we go 25 minutes of first and mid and we go 10 minutes of third down. Okay? Um, on Wednesday, okay, we'll come out and we will, uh, we'll get, in our walkthrough, we'll go through some, some goal line stuff and then we'll go do goal line for 10 minutes. Um, sometimes we even take the pads off here, that's why goal line is early. Uh, we would do scale emphasis, that's what this should say right here. We go back over to the defensive field and do five minutes of, of giving us a look, and five minutes of giving them a look. We go 10 minutes of red zone, um, and then we'll break up and do scale in the middle. We'll go back to first and 10, 
And then we'll go blitz and third down for 15 more minutes. We'll do 20 more minutes of first and 10. Again, we spend a lot of time on that. Okay, on Thursday, okay, we will come out and do five more minutes of, oops, excuse me, five more minutes of first and 10, and that will be our sequence. Okay, those will be our, um, our first 10 or 12 plays of the ball game, okay, that, <clears throat> that we want to hit. Uh, we'll hit about five or six of them right here. The rest of them we'll hit in this Thursday strip. We'll go hit third downs, our special plays, our goal line and two point plays, and then we'll get to our Thursday script. Okay, this is our Thursday script. It's 20 plays, and I know a lot of you all do this kind of stuff too, but I just want to hit on it because it's been one of the best things that we've done. Is we, uh, on Thursday, it's the only time we actually run the plays in. The ones are out there, and it's game simulation. Okay, and I write the script on Thursday morning, and I do everything I can to get the quarterback. It's his exam. I blitz him from every single direction. I give him every single check that we, I try to give him every single check that we may get. I really try and get him, okay? Um, I take a lot of pride in this, and I love getting after him, okay? Especially because Arthur's is pretty smart, and he's hard to get. Um, but we go 10 plays with the ones. This is the only time we don't wrap the fire of the huddles all week. 10 plays with the ones, and then they try off, and then the twos come out here and repeat the script. Okay? But the, the coaches are off to the side. It's like I'm not there since I'm up in the box. I just stand back behind the huddle, and they run the plays in. We work on all our substitutions, all that stuff. We do all our special personnel groups. I try and hit all those things that happen. You know, you got to go to, you know, you've got something specialized for some kid. He's got to get to run that play, so on and so forth. And then we hit all the, you know, third and launch, fourth and ones. You know, we don't hit Hail Mary and that kind of stuff, but we hit all of the all of the situations. We do go for two to win the game, that sort of stuff. Basically, we have 10 plays that's coming out, and then we flip it around and have 10 plays that are coming in. Okay, so, you know, we spend a little bit more time. We get a few less reps than we used to before we did this, but for us, it's been great. You know, the quarterback, for our backup quarterback, he's actually in the huddle by himself now. He's actually running the show there. Um, on Friday, the reason they carry 20 of them, okay, you know, I, we can all draw them up, okay, but how can we get them to where they are player specific, okay? You know, part of our job as offensive coaches is if we have a kid with a specific skill set, we need to use that skill set. We have a guy that's a great jet sweep guy. He needs to be our jet sweep guy. Okay? If we have a guy that um, is a great post runner, he needs to be our post runner. Okay? I think those kids embrace that too. Okay? And that's kind of what we fall into. We'll fall into it more because our skill group will shrink this next year. And we have a large group of skill kids that were pretty good football players. Okay? We don't have as big a skill group. And we have some good football players. We're going to have this biggest skill group. And well, we have to make sure that their specific skills fit. Okay, so don't be afraid to use them. This guy's going in because he runs this really well. Let's make sure we do it. Let's put it on the call sheet as 12 personnel, whatever the kid's name is, and let's make sure he's in there. Okay? Those kids embrace it too. Yeah, I'm the jet sweep guy. Yeah, I'm the whatever. Yeah, I keep using jet sweep. But I think these are important. Again, it's just like we talked about. Okay. As I talked about earlier, they knew where 85 was going to be, Jeremy Kerr. And okay? they talked about it, they talked about it, they talked about it. So I'm like, okay, we'll go. we throw the screen to Jeremy Kerr. Okay? Well, let's fake it to him. Okay? And to me, you know, this is part of our double moves. How can we take shots out? Okay? We're going to run the screen and go. You know, Jeremy is going to go fake it, and he's going to try and climb to the other hash just in case we don't have done work. We can get too hurt, but we're just going to run. I think Bo will go over here, okay, and we're running screen and go, okay. But to me, these are shots that we got to go take, okay, in order to win ball games. We got to go take shots, and we got to make those guys. They're super aggressive. It's a super aggressive defense that doesn't do a lot, okay. They play play. Okay? They know, watch this guy. They know he's going to get the screen as soon as we line up. 
Okay? They know they know where 85 is. Okay? And to me, obviously we were pretty fired up and you never know what's gonna work. But you got a pretty good feeling that they were tuned in to where 85 is going to be. We're the worst celebrators ever. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is like going to be an attorney. Like he's brilliant. He really is. And I told him one day, he scored a touchdown and pulled this number right here. You know. I said, what? I said, he's a, he's a walk-on from Brown. He's a great kid. You know. I said, what the hell? I don't know, Coach, I blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> but he's real, I mean, he's a head boss, more than me, but he's a bad celebrator. <laughs> All right, so the next thing is, okay, you know, there's the work on the safeties, okay? Well, let's double move the corners, okay? Who do we want to double move with, and who do we want to double move against? Okay, do we want to get the corner? Do we want to get the safety? They have a safety that's super aggressive. Do they have uh, um, you know, a linebacker that we want to try and work on? Okay? Um, for us, going into this game, the corners were about even. Okay? They were both pretty good players. And I think they were all like second team all big ten type guys. Really solid players. We didn't feel like we had to have one over the other. Okay? But, you know, we wanted to go start them early in the game. Let's go back them up. Okay, you guys saw those pictures of Andy just throwing the out route to the field, and there's nobody even close to him. Well, we wanted to back them up early. Okay, and when we get to the game film, I'll show you kind of how that works and kind of how that doesn't work. But we wanted to go play action, get them all down into the box, and go check it on. Again, because I don't. I think you have to check shots. It's too hard to drive the ball all the way down the field. Too many things got to go right. But go get on his toes and go go. Again, that's our best receiver. He's a freshman. Okay, that's our best receiver. So we were going to make sure. Again, and I want to call it. All of a sudden, our fifth best receiver will be in there. You only get one shot at. It. Okay, make sure he's in there. Okay, and that's. Comes from the guys on the field, and that comes from you as a play caller getting them out of your mouth so you give them a little bit of heads up. I, I can't tell you how important I think it is because we would all be, or I would have been sick if we had to call and I looked down there, and it was one of the kids I really, really love, but can't run, you know, in there and again, you know, because it happens all the time. You guys know we've done it. As much as a big an influence or as big an emphasis as we make on it, I've done it before. We called it and looked out there and got, goodness gracious, what are we doing? Well, that's not fault. Okay? The other thing is, where are our bad matchups? Okay? I think this is just as important. It's important to be honest with yourself. Okay? Who do we not match up very well with? Okay? And I put two clips on here of us being stupid. Because it's important to be honest. You know, um, is there somebody at the point of attack that we want to stay away with, stay away from? Is there somebody in the secondary that, that we don't want to throw the ball at? You know, that we think is a really, really good guy, and we just got to admit that given the chance, given an opportunity, we're not going to we're not going to go that way. We're going to go another direction. Um, for us in this game, you know, this play drives me crazy because I love this play. Okay, I love running the quarterback power. Okay. We don't have a great athlete back there. We've got a really good player, but we don't have a great athlete. But I love it down there in the red zone. We only run it in big games. Okay. We don't want him to get hurt. Okay. So we don't run it if it's not important. Okay. But by God, it's a good play. Okay. And if you look at just the X's and O's right here okay, of the play, you would agree with me, I think, that it is a good play. Okay. That the quarterback power right here, we have enough blockers to block everybody in the box. Okay, that's the only guy that would be unlocked for a first down call on the 12 uh, yard line. It is a good call. Okay? But it is not a good call versus Wisconsin. Okay? This is stupid. This is my fault. Okay? We knew going into the game that we did not match up physically with those defensive ends. Okay? Our tight ends did not match up well. We felt like we could handle them pass protection. Okay? But they did not. I love our tight ends. They're great kids. Okay? But. 
you know, you just got to face it. I mean, they're not going to knock them guys off the ball. This isn't even number 99. This is the other. They were good players now. Okay? But you watch right here, and we're getting stoned right in the hole. Okay? Now, I would love for the quarterback to pull the guard, okay, and come inside here. But it doesn't matter. Okay? That's not the point of it. The point of it is I'm not giving our kids a chance to succeed here. Okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not putting them in a very good situation. Okay? They are. Yeah. Quick. Donnie. Simple. What not to do, even though it looks good on the board. And you can see we don't do a very good job at the point of attack. And, you know, we're not giving our kids a real great uh, chance to succeed. This is the other one that I still face in that okay, at myself. Okay, it's third and two, okay, and we, we had a couple double calls. This is actually a double call, okay, and uh, one of them was with the option of the field, which I wish we would have called here, but we didn't. Um, and the other one was with three step, okay. Well, I have watched, like I said, 12 games of three step, I mean, 12 games of Wisconsin. I have watched them back a million balls now, okay? A million, okay? And we sat in there and said, uh, you know, we would really like to com combo these couple plays, the stretch or the power or whatever, with three-step, because we know we'll be able to throw three-step to the field if they give us this defense right here. And, I, you know, we talked about it. I said, well, now, these guys are big. They're going to bat balls down and that kind of stuff, and we need to try and get this into the gun. So we said, no, I tell you what, we're going to teach that right tackle or left tackle to go get that guy. Okay? We're going to get his hands down, we're going to go make it work, and then uh, we'll get the ball out and it'll be fine. Well, you can see here that, you know, this is our, again, our best receiver right here, and this is the cushion that we have on third and three. And we're, we're in pretty good shape for throwing the ball the field here, I think. Okay? Um, and we double call it, and he goes to the pass, and this is the guy we're going to throw to, okay? But because I'm not smart enough to say, no, we should get in the gun and, and combine these two plays. It gets batted down, and it could cost us a game, because we're moving the ball, man. And right here on this third and two, we're gonna get, the right tackle really does exactly what we asked him to do. I mean, he could be a little more aggressive, but he's on it. Okay? And the kid still knocks it down. And that's my fault. You know, I'm kicking myself. We, I could have hurt us right there. And when you play a team like this and can keep the ball for so long, every one of those calls is so important. Okay? It's so darn important. So that's two examples in that game. And there's plenty. It's not like you gain 50 yards on every play. But of, of things that we specifically talked about during the week, and I specifically ignored. Okay? And it could have hurt us. And again, plays that are good on the board, but you know we, we probably didn't do our best job, okay? The last thing is, we gotta show them something new, okay? And this is every week, okay? Remember, don't mess with the quarterback, and don't mess with the offensive lineman, okay? But we gotta show them something every week, something new. Okay, we've got to show it to them early, okay? I want those guys to go over there and draw something up, okay? I want the defensive coordinator to say, Okay, what are our answers to this? Okay, is it a new motion? Is it a new formation? Is it a new personnel group? Is it a new way we've lined up in that personnel group? We got the tight end in the backfield and so on and so forth. I want them to wonder what could come next. Now, I'm not talking about reinventing the wheel. Okay, I'm just talking about let's give our kids something during the week, a little deal, three or four plays, four or five plays, that's okay, new for them to go look at. Okay, for kids to get excited about I think they like that stuff. They don't like going out there and doing the same old stuff over and over and over again. Now, again, I want to practice the same things over and over again, but I want to give them something new. Okay, so what what are we going to make them go over there and draw up? What are we going to make that defensive coordinator decide that he's going to have to defend early in the game? Okay, for us going into this game, it was, it was a couple motions and it was a formation. Okay, we had not shown, we had not shown the, the triangle. Okay, that everybody's doing it. You know, and you see 
a bunch of people doing this now. We did it a little bit different. We put 85, because he's like back. We did it with basically three smaller guys. Okay, with two tailbacks and a receiver, because he's kind of like a tailback for us. Okay, some people are doing it with tight ends, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, we just wanted them to go defend it. Okay, we had a handful of plays, and we were going to run it. One of them was we were going to run a wheel out of the backfield. Okay, and there he goes. And we missed this. Okay, but we want them to go say, okay, you know, they watch TV too, and everybody's lining up in the triangle, you know. So obviously TCU watched TV, so they wanted to draw this up. Okay, so what can they do out of it? What do we have to defend? For us, we can run our spread stuff. We can run the option, our option, and okay? we can run the cheat, you know, I mean, the backwards zone and the backwards power. But again, nothing new for the offensive lineman. Okay, this protection is exactly the same as the protection that they run all year. Okay, we mess with the skill guys, but not the line. Okay, and we run a post and a wheel. We slip and throw behind him. Fancy shoes didn't work. But I want those guys over there trying to draw up something different. Okay. The next thing was, we're a big stack team. I really like stacks, okay? We mess with stacks all the time. Um, I think it's good if you're a team that struggles with man coverage. I think it's really good. Um, and it's something that allows you to do things from a quarterback perspective that keep them exactly the same. Um, you learn different plays out of it, just tweak things a little bit. But we wanted to, we wanted to stack and show them the, the motion weak. Um, for us, this is the first third down of the game. You guys remember, uh, I told you earlier, we were going to break them down into generalities in third down. What are they in third down? I told you they're a cover two team. Okay, I also told you they're a cover three team, and they're a man three pressure team. This is the man three pressure, the first third long of the game. Okay, we knew we were going to get one of those three things, basically. Okay, and we wanted to uh, show the same concept. It's an inside high level. Okay, it's the exact same concept. This quarterback and these receivers have run this a gazillion times. Okay, now they have not run it out of this motion and look. Okay, that's the only difference. Okay, so when we ran it for us, this is called um, X shallow. Okay, well, they didn't have to spend any time with the freshman quarterback or the senior quarterback telling him where to throw the ball. Because it's the same as it's been since the day he walked on there. All I said is we're going to go rec stack text. That's it. Okay. Again, same concept, different formation. The progression stays the same. We wanted to have something good in the three, something good in the two, and something good in the, to the main three. We're starting down the game. We're good. But again, it was a new because I knew they were going to scheme up their blitz. It is obvious that they are going to scheme up their man three blitz try and mess with people's protection. Well, for me, the easiest way, if you're going to play man three and blitz us, let's get everybody out of there and let's just try and find those five. Okay, you start bringing more guys in there, they start being, does that guy have the back or does that guy have the back or does that guy have the back? Well, let's just get the back out of there so we know that that guy's going and let's try to help these five. Okay, for us, we run the, we get in this tight end trips. Okay, for us, it was going to be we're going to motion out weak. Okay, again, I want them to adjust. Okay, I want, this is a pretty run heavy formation for us. And okay, we hadn't done a whole lot of this, but I wanted to make sure that they could handle it. Okay, again, I want them over there drawing stuff up. All we did was run a concept. We've run eight million times. Okay, but we just, we just ran it a little bit different. One of the problems you get with the bowl game when you have this long to prepare is, first of all, you start growing up too much stuff. Okay? Second of all, you feel a little bit like a sitting duck. Okay? You know, the other team has a long time to get ready for you. Okay? So you have to at least show them something new. Okay? Um, you know, that, that's kind of how we did it. I, I want to touch on the, the kind of base rules, just kind of in synopsis for what, for what we did. Okay? First of all, 
your schedule is your schedule, okay? You guys, that was our schedule. You know, you guys do whatever you need to do from that, okay? But don't mess with the quarterback from week to week. Don't mess with the offensive line from week to week, okay? Um, evaluate your team and your matchups, okay? Honestly, okay? You know, my, one of my best friends in coaching is an offensive line coach, and my God, we can run the power every day versus anybody. Well, let's be honest about it. Okay? And let's decide what are our favorite matchups, what are our, our favorite what matchups are not in our side. Okay? Um, get your playmakers the football. Okay? A guy once told me a long time ago, think players, not plays. Okay? Make sure you don't walk in there at halftime and your best receiver has got one ball thrown his way. And you know, everybody's going to be sick if you come in there on Saturday and watch the film and we didn't even try to get the guy ball. <coughs> Those are important discussions to have during the week. Okay? The other game that we always play during the week in our discussions is how can they get us? Okay? What can they do to, to, to get us? Let's talk about those things before we're in front of 94,000 people and they're in a 50 front and they're doing something different. Let's try and talk away through our solutions, okay? Let's try and talk our solutions through before we get out there, okay? I'll be honest with you, two years ago we played the Fiesta Bowl and we tried to talk through every solution, okay? And they still did something different, okay? And we had a bunch of things that went along with that deal at Boise, but you know, they got us and we weren't prepared for it. Didn't do a very good job, okay. but talk through it. Try and talk through it so you have an answer, so you're not trying to think of it in the middle of the ball game. Okay? Don't be afraid to use your guys for skill-specific reasons. Okay? You got a jet sweep guy. I keep using jet sweep, but you got a jet guy. Use him as your jet guy. You got a post guy. Use him as your post guy. You got a comeback guy. Use him. That way. Okay? Those kids will take pride in those roles too. Okay? They'll really, really enjoy it. Okay. Now I want to walk you guys just kind of through what we did. Okay, this is the game. Okay, I just put the game film on here. We got a little bit of time. Um, you know, there's bad plays on here too. Okay, um, but starting off the game, okay, we have a quarterback. Okay, that uh, you know, I, one of the things about self evaluation. This kid is a really good player. He's really smart. I love him to death. I hope one day my daughter walks through the door and got like this guy. Okay? But at the start of the game, you don't want to call three step. Okay? Because he is in such a hurry and he's kind of excited that he's going to hit the guy in the back of the head. Okay? That's just what he's done. Okay? So we decided about a year ago that to start the game, Andy's first pass, we're going to make him do something with his hands. We're going to make him fake the ball, okay? We're going to make him roll out, okay? We're call a five and a five and gather play, but we're not going to call three step, okay? Three years ago, I was a running back coach here. We, would, we had a little kid from Alito. We would split out a receiver, and he'd run three step for us. And Andy hit him right in the face but two or three times early in the game. And he's just so fast early in the game before he's set the down. Okay, so we always want to get him off to a good start, and that's not really hard because he's a pretty good player. But self-evaluation, don't go three-step anymore. Quit doing it. Okay? So what we did was we just went with a little play action. We ran this a gazillion times during the season. But we're gonna we're gonna run, you know, a hitch, and on the outside, we're running a read corner. Okay, if we have cushion and an alley player pushing past us. On the inside, we're going to go ahead and hook it up. Okay, if we have man man, then we'll go ahead and run a high angle corner coming out. Of okay, but again, we're just trying to affect the alley player. We're trying to get Andy a quick, easy completion. We're trying to see. This is another little thing I think is important. We're trying to we split the back, not because it means anything. Okay, other than you prove to them you'll move the back. But we want to see if they're going to set the front to the back okay, without calling a run. So. We flip it, and of course they bump the three technique over to the back, okay? and which is usually good for our for 
our gap skew stuff. Okay, but we just wanted to make sure and see what was going on, so we got that down. You know, we got, you know, the, the GA that's charting should say three to the back, you know. You should write that down and see what you know. <clears throat> okay, second play. We do script our, here's how we do the first of our game. I'm going to just take it. This is how they've always done it there, so I've just kind of signed on to it. But on Thursday, we do our sequence. We go in a circle around the table, okay? And each guy, like I get the first play, the receiver coach gets the second play, so on and so forth, trying to get different looks and that sort of stuff, okay, for the first 10 plays. Well, I'm not saying that. I'd never done it like that before we got here, but that's kind of how they do it, okay? Now, obviously, you're allowed to go out of order, okay? Because if you notice, the receiver coach is always chucking and ducking. Okay? <laughs> it's, so I know he's next. So I'm the first call. So I'm, you know, I get accused of being conservative because I know double post with the wheels coming from the receiver. Okay? But I reserve the right to go out of order also, which is what I did, what we did here. Okay? This is, uh, he actually did have double post with the wheel. Right? Which we get to here in a minute. But, um, so we get to our week set, and we go run the reason. We don't have this double call. Again, I'm not trying, I don't really like double calling stuff at the beginning of the game, okay, particularly a game like this. I want to get the quarterback get in there and get his feet wet, let him go. Even a fifth year senior that's played as many games as any, I don't, I don't want him checking the first play or the first couple of plays. Okay? But again, you guys saw this. This is, again, I was trying to get 99 to play the read zone as opposed to trying to knock him off the ball. Okay, we come back, we want to, again, this is not something different, but we want to make sure they know we'll go ahead and put trips into the boundary. Okay, we like messing with people in the boundary. I really love that. I think that's one thing that's really good. That's one of our, our things that we always answer is, you know, how are they going to handle formation in the boundary? Okay, how are we going to mess with them? Well, what we did here is we put uh, formation in the boundary, and you'll see the double post wheel into the boundary. Okay, coming open. Uh, but we've got 85, who's kind of our guy over here to the field, singled up on the alley player, and uh, we get past the fears. So the quarterback's technically right, but you can see our double post is gonna look pretty good up, in, up to the boundary. Uh, we ended up with good leverage right here. He's outside, he goes the first post out there, and comes the second post. But, uh, and Red, excuse me, Andy's okay to, to take the option route. We get past the fears. <coughs> Plus, to be honest with you, I don't know if we could pass ball long enough to throw the double post, so I told him to throw the guy out and throw the option out. We'll come back and go close. <clears throat> okay, coming back, boom, now we're back to something new, okay? Um, we went ahead and put in our, our little diamond, we call it a triangle, but our little diamond deal. Um, we're going to arc everybody and run our little Cheetos play, the same play we talked about last year. This is, this is one of those deals where, this is where overcoaching comes into play. I, uh, you know, we had seen them trade this and him try and squeeze and then run back out, okay? So all for a month, we're working on, you know, them messing with us, trying to squeeze and then run back out, and talking to Andy about it and all that kind of stuff. And then look what the end does. He just stands there. Okay, and what's the quarterback do? He pulls it. Just gets a snot knocked out of him right there. You know, well, you know, I messed him up, I guess. Bad coaching. But the guy just stayed back. This is one of the good things about older players. You get on the headphones and you say, okay, Brad, um, what happened? You know, did we not need to run it? Did he mess with it? He's like, no, coach, he stood there. I'm an idiot. You know, you're like, okay, well, at least you know you can come back to it. You know, you don't. You've got good feedback on what exactly happened. He's not afraid to say, Coach, I just messed it up. Um, he paid for it, though. I the only good thing about it. Okay, so again, we come back. Okay, this is another thing. We're running, uh, we're going to give him another formation. We're going to end up with trips into the boundary. Again, all we're trying to do, now we've, you know, Andy's got the snot knocked out of him. He's told them we can go to three-step now. We know they're going to be loose. 
Okay, we can go to three step. The problem is, here they are again, here's 99 knocking another ball down. Okay, but all we're trying to do is get through our run formation, give them another motion, make them adjust. Okay, well, obviously we could work either the boundary or the field here. And okay? we, we're in really good shape under the boundary as well. Okay, but they get it knocked down. They knock it down. So now we're to third and ten. Okay, this is the same play you just saw. Okay, again, this is the first third and long of the game. Okay, just like we talked about, we know we're going to get either a one safety look or three or man, or we're going to get a cover two. Okay, all we're doing is running the inside high low. There's the under, and here's the dig. Okay, this guy's going to run an out. Okay, for us, we teach our outs off steps. It's six step out. Okay, six step over inside put out. So the quarterback is one, two, three, and throw the out. If not, we're the inside high low. Okay. There he goes. The tailback's just running a go, uh, an arrow. We just wanted to get him out of there. Again, it's not important that he be an empty. We just don't want him in there so we can see who we protect. <coughs> but again, that's one of the few times you get to really throw on rhythm. You, know, you really like it when it works out like that. You just go one, two, three, and get out. Okay, so we're back to first down. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play action. Okay, this is a pretty run heavy formation for us. We go ahead and play action. We're running our four verbal rules. We'll come back on the outside. Okay, the alley player you see here squeezes. Okay, and we're going to come back and again we fall down for the 15th time in the game. But, um, you know, here we're just, we're still trying to, to feel our way through. We're going to go to a to uh, one of our run-heavy formations and try and try and play action ball. Then work, stumble. Okay. See, this is an interesting changeup, and this is not really an X's no stop, but I think this is an interesting thing that we try to mess with. Okay? We're running the Cheetos play, the, the G play. Okay, where you read the end, but um, we read the linebacker here. Okay, so we told the guard to pull for him, and we're going to read that because they have been flying those guys out of there. I think it's better with two backs back there because you get arc path by him, which stretches. Okay, and if this guy sits, we'll just block the end and give it. Now, obviously, we have to be sure that the end's not going to fly straight up field. Okay, so in order to do this. Okay. But we knew they weren't. I mean, this is a very disciplined football team we're playing, and they're not going to just start flying the field. Okay. It's going to be a good play. We actually do a good job on the on the double team. There goes the linebacker. We're going to hit it right in here for four or five, and then we come off the double team, and that guy makes a tackle. But it was kind of a change up. I don't know if we'll do we could beat him back underneath to the field with our guy and run the slam. We did not know that everybody, in the, their mother, was going to be in the boundary and it was going to be this open, okay? But this play was not practiced, okay? But we have a system that, I'm bragging on the system now, that, that allowed us to call this um, with the combinations and with the rules that the quarterback knew where to throw the ball also, okay? I mean, we could literally walk in there and say, we're not throwing stuff up in the dirt because it's stuff we've done. But we're going to run this combination up here, and we're going to run this combination down here. And this guy right here is going to know where to throw the ball. And I'm thoroughly convinced that if our backup had been in there, he would have known where to throw the ball on, on at least this play, maybe not any others. But on this play, into this look. Um, so to me, this is part of not game planning, but part of offensive coaching that's important is can you make adjustments in game? And I don't want to go cram everything you worked on for a month. I'm just saying sometimes there's opportunities out there. Things happen differently or you feel differently in the middle of the game. You get out there and say, wait a minute, we can't block that guy. Or no, we can't block that guy. Or they're going to line up like this. We have a chance to do this. Okay? And hopefully the system allows you to do it without it being a major undertaking. Okay? If you're out there trying to reinvent the wheel every single week offensively, you know, it's, it's 
it's, it's just not going to work. It's the same old deal that I said when you in the quarterback meeting, is you need to teach the quarterback the defense, not your offense every week, okay? It's too much, okay? Well, anyway, this is a nice gain on a play we ain't never practiced, okay? Which, Okay, this is one of our double calls. It doesn't work. Okay, we got it with the lead draw. Our right tackle blows the circuit here. Okay, so we give. We go back to give them something new. Okay, there's a new motion with an easy pass play. So take it. Our receiver does a really good job. We're getting the first down. Okay, right now. I'm getting the feeling as a play caller is, okay, we're, you know, we're not really running the ball very well, and I want to go in this sucker. We're lucky to keep this drive going, right? I mean, it's constantly second and long. It's constantly, uh, you know, we're behind the chains. It's constantly a fight to get a first down. So I'm getting that itchy feeling. So I'm reaching into the, for the bazooka, right? I want to, let's score, let's end it, okay? When we come back, we take a shot with the post and the wheel, and unfortunately, it's kind of one of those weird throws where it's, you know, it's a little behind him, and his feet kind of go out from underneath him. He can't really put much air under it because the corner can lap back over the top, and we miss it. And to me, this was the play that I look back on um, that I felt like we had a chance to really not blow the game open, but had a chance to score some more points and do it, you know, Maybe not have such a nail biter at the end. But it's kind of interesting when you, you have the, as a play caller, you have those feelings and those emotions that you're thinking about. You know, I got to try and end this thing. Let's try and get this sucker in the end zone and go. He came back and ran this, the same Cheeto play, got a couple yards, trying to get it back. Third and six. Again, we tried to run, uh, this was kind of our third medium, we got 50. We tried to run, uh, we tried to run our double comebacks with still an inside high low on it. And, you know, we got beat at the point of attack. We got a hold of it. Our big left tackle here gets bent up underneath. I'm telling you, that 99 is playing now. So things kind of fell, fell, fell apart on us there. We had a chance to really, to really drive the knife in on there with the wheel route. We didn't get it. We come back. We get our double calls going. Let's get something efficient. Let's make sure we can switch, flip the field. Let's make sure we can keep things going. We hit them with the option for 12. And you can see whenever times are tough, the safety blanket, is, for me, was the double calls. Okay? And I think that's important as a play caller as an offense. When I was at Illinois State, it was the jailbreak screen. That was my baby. That was what I felt like we were good at. That was my safety one. And, uh, it's different every year. And, you know, it's, it's just whatever it is. Whatever it is, is you know, when you go to something, you need something. And we went to uh, empty again, just trying to fill three step right here. Again, for us, it's hard for me to kind of put into words. It's very difficult, very uncomfortable for us to call a game when we can't, when we're not running the ball. You know, and we're, we're we're struggling a little bit to run the ball. And we probably knew that was going to happen a little bit, but trying to double slates to the field. We thought we were going to get a wall. We we're going to throw it to the outside guy this time. Just don't execute very well, to be honest with you. Scheme-wise, we're all in good shape, but just don't execute. You sh should be a little bit flatter. Okay, again, you can see we go to double call. Okay, we're going to run the option again here to the left, and we've got a great look. I mean a great look. 
Okay. First problem is we don't execute. We don't get the pitch key wasted in our tight end on the left side. It's not doing a good job of getting the linebacker back. But we're in great shape because the left tackle has got to get to that guy. Okay. The tight end's got to arc for that guy. And there's our pitch key. That's the free half. So we get forced into another third and long, and they, they've had enough of us, so they just say, forget it, we're dropping everybody, you know. Which, you know, is one of those deals in retrospect, you should probably know that was coming. Sometimes you get that feel, you know, you've had their number on third down every single time, basically. Okay? And uh, should have known that something's going to be like that. So we, we don't have it. And, uh, We tried to run the quick screen, okay, which we've been really good at because we don't, we at least slowed up these guys a little bit, okay. We can't get the, the retracer out of there, okay? which is always a problem. Okay, this was a, the, the next third long, okay, but we ran our read, read uh, and we talked about Earlier, it's going to be two, it's going to be one, it's going to be cover three. Well, they've gone to three here. Well, we were running our, our, our smash route with a read corner, okay, which on the inside right here is if he has alley player outside and soft corner, he's just going to hook it up. Okay, so you end up with basically what amounts to a curl flat concept in the cover three, which is really good. It's just teaching it is a little bit, you know, I mean, it takes some reps for those kids to get comfortable with. It's not hard when he hooks up. What's hard is making sure you get the corner out of there when you want it. But uh, this is a really good job of executing by our kids in the a three deep look. You've got to keep the change there. Try to just run the zone up in there and see if you can get anything going on with the ball. We go to our double move. I mean, our double call, we hit it out there again, my safety blanket. Okay, and then we get to the third down, and I lose my mind. This is the same thing we talked about earlier. This is where we didn't do a very good job of going three steps in front of the center. I wish we were running our cops from the field, but we get it knocked down because it doesn't mean it. Then the next time we got the ball, we had to keep them from scoring. We had to keep them from giving it back to them. So we got to tow it up and go. We got to get a first down. Their defense went on the field, so we just lined up in two, two by two and ran the zone. And big happiness and fog way right here. We got our back. And push down. It's moving as fast. But that's kind of how it went. There's the good and the bad of it. You know, to be honest with you, I think the biggest thing are those base rules we talked about. You know, like your schedule is your schedule. Um, you get your good guys to football and try not to mess with those old linemen and that quarterback. I appreciate you guys being a great audience. I'll be around for a little bit.